Hey everybody, so I have this guitar that I've actually had since the um, mid 80s. My parents bought it for me years ago. It's a Profile uh, strap copy and Profile, um, a, more of an Australian brand. A story goes that there was a distributor or somebody in Australia who saw the great Japanese guitar factories of the 80s, the Fuji Gens and so on, and went to them and said, I want you to do some straps and some tellies for me. And the uh, Profile um, series is what got imported into Australia as a result. I don't know much more about these guitars other than that, so if you know more, leave a comment and let me know. Um, great guitars, really, really lovely guitars. I've had this since the mid-80s. The only thing I've really done to it was initially I changed the pickguard to this tortoise shell. It was a black before, and I changed the volume knobs a while ago, and probably about 10 years ago, I put some Fender Vintage Noiseless pickups in there. So it sounds fantastic. I love this guitar. But a while ago, I bought some new volume knobs for it. So with the um, pickups, there was a new pickup selector that came with that. That's like this cream color, but the volume knobs are very stark white. And um, yeah, it bothers me a little bit. So what I've been doing is researching how to kind of relic the, the volume controls to make them more of a cream color. And so in this video, I'll just have a quick chat to you about how, I've, um, how I'm gonna do that. And you can watch the process. So I read a lot on the web um, about how to do it. There's a shoe polish method where you can rub them in, in shoe polish and so on. But the, the more popular one that I see is soaking them in a mixture that's like coffee grounds, tea bags, that sort of stuff. The point is you make a mixture that's a very, very dark brown texture. You leave your knobs soaking in that for a period of time, days, we're talking sort of three, four days. Pull them out, give them a wash, and um, they should then have taken on a bit more of a, a creamy light brown tinge. The important first step, however, that I see people missing is that what you need to do is with the, the volume controls, rough them up a little bit with steel wool or a very fine sandpaper. If you don't do that step, then what happens is that I, I believe that there's like a bit of a coating on these things. So the, the, the staining a mixture has a hard time getting into the plastic to actually stain it. So what you kind of got to do is just take, uh, I guess, a level of that off. So what I'll be doing today is either steel wool or sandpaper doing that first and then um, constructing my mixture and so I can admit it. So um, watch as we go along. All right, so just got some fine sandpaper and just rubbing around the edges. You can see on the sandpaper um, here, there's the white mark. So it's, you know you're doing something. Um, I never quite know how hard I should go with this sort of stuff. So I've sanded these. Um, the next step is to get the mixture um, ready. So here in Australia, we have these coffee pods. And so you stick it in your machine, it makes your coffee and the grounds remain in here. So my theory is um, we've these stick in the machine until someone bothers to actually clean it out. So my theory is to get a few of these and scrape them in. So I've got the coffee grounds in here, um, I used about five pods, uh, again on the web I see different things about how much coffee grounds to use, some people will add tea bags, I don't think it matters frankly guys, the point is just to make up a liquid that's dark brown that's going to stain your knobs. This is um, obviously hot water added in, and I think the point is here that if I added hot water in right up to the top, it would dilute that mixture, so five would probably wouldn't be enough. So I'm putting in enough hot water looking at the volume knobs to think that's probably enough um, to submerge them in it and what I will do is perhaps to stir this up a little bit looks good and then we just put the volume controls in yep and that's completely submerged which is what I'm looking for so sitting in here now I've got three knobs sitting there um, completely submerged in the liquid so what we will do is leave it in there. It's Sunday morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Thursday night we'll look at it, it'll be four days, four and a bit days, um, and we'll see how it goes from there. So it's Thursday night, they've been soaking here since Sunday morning, uh, so that's four, four and a half days, and they're looking quite a nice little cream colour. So what I'm going to do is take them out of this uh, water, 
wash them um, in the sink over there and then we'll see how they look with the guitar. So just putting these on. Um, one question I had from all the YouTube videos that I saw that nobody got answered was do these smell because you've been soaking them in coffee. Um, short answer is not very much. Uh, once you wash them, as well, if you put your nose up to them, you can smell a bit of a coffee smell, but otherwise not. So, there they are on the guitar. Um, you can see really, really close to the, um, the pickup covers um, that I've got on there, and you know, have, have aged them quite well. So, that was four days in a, basically a solution of coffee grounds. As I said, I think in the start of the video, I've seen people we recommend coffee grounds, tea bags. Uh, turmeric is another one to soak them in. I guess the bottom line is you want a brown kind of mixture that you can soak these in that they're going to um, absorb some of that mixture. So there you have it. Um, my guitar, I said the once white volume knobs are now a bit nicer cream um, colour. Really happy with the way it's turned out. So hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, I'll leave a comment and I'll try to answer them. I'm by no means an expert. I just learnt um, by Googling all this stuff and finding out how to do it. Would love a comment. Um, if you'd like to like the video, subscribe, that'd be awesome as well. Thank you so much for watching.